the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Although people may be joining us from many regions, we acknowledge that the Church of St. Stephen in the Fields stands on occupied land the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit and Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat and Petun nations, land covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant. Treaty 13 and the Williams Treaty are also relevant to this territory. We acknowledge that we have broken the treaties. We acknowledge the damage done by colonialism and the role that our church has played in this. And we pledge ourselves to work for a future of justice and reconciliation. The eternal gifts of Christ the King the apostles' glory let us sing, and all with hearts of gladness raise to goodness a thankful love. This is the steadfast faith of sin. And hope that never yields no fears, and love of Christ in perfect glory that lays the prince of this world. In them the Father's glory. In them the will of God the Son, in them exalts the Holy Ghost. Through them rejoice the heavenly host. To the Redeemer, that thou wouldst join to them on high thy servants who this grace implore forever and forever. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting us to this table. Let us confess our sins, confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God. We confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name, Amen. 
Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, everyone. Peace, everybody. Peace, everyone. Peace to everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace, everyone. Peace to all from Adonis and John Hudson. Peace. Oh, peace, everyone. <laughs> In the highest, and peace to his people on earth, Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer, for you alone are the A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-matured wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-trimmed, of well-matured wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you.
The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it. The world and all who dwell therein. For it is he who founded it upon the seas and made it firm upon the rivers of the deep. Who can ascend the hill of the Lord? who can stand in his holy place those who have clean hands and a pure heart who have not pledged themselves to falsehood nor sworn by what is a fraud they shall receive a blessing from the lord and a just reward from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek him, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates. Lift them high, O everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is this king of glory the lord strong and mighty the lord mighty in battle lift up your heads o gates lift them high o everlasting doors and the king of glory shall come in who is he this king of glory the lord of hosts he is the king of glory from the book revelation then I saw a new heaven and for the first heaven and the first earth passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Being and crying and for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. He said, Write this, for these are worthy and true. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Before the throne of God, and he 
sits upon the throne will shelter them with his presence. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also, and also with you. With you. Lord, through our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke, John. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Apologies, I can't resist anything that resembles a dare. So you got a sun gospel. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts 
be now and always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. The Feast of All Saints and the Feast of All Souls are meant to be celebrated in our church calendar on successive days, very close together and yet distinct. We will, because of the vagaries of the calendar and having two different services, in fact, celebrate them a week apart this year, which creates more of an appearance of difference. It's a difference that wouldn't have made any sense to the church in its earliest days, because in the very early church, the saints were all members of the Christian community. We are sanctified, holy, hagioi, not because we are very good or very special, but because we have been created and marked for holiness, a people who are to be remade, whose destiny is always to be growing into our fullness as part of the body, part of the life of God in Christ not saints because we are perfect or anything close to that, but because we have offered ourselves to a process of being endlessly transformed. Over time, the church came to designate certain people as saints in a particular way, as people whose lives were especially vivid examples in one way or another of the human person in the process of transformation, the human person growing into the life of God. Every now and then we slip into the easy but quite incorrect idea that to be a saint means not that these were people who offered themselves most fully to God's transforming desire, but that they were people who were just very, very good or even more misleading, people who were very, very nice. We say, oh, you're a saint when someone does something nice for us. And a few of the saints of God were probably nice. Some of them were good in some easily recognizable way of being good. But they were also like us, like all the saints in the broader sense of the word, troubled and confused and weak and fallible, sometimes very hard to like, often mistaken, and almost always really quite weird. Saint Augustine abandoned his partner of many years and took their son away with him because his mother wanted him to marry someone more socially acceptable. St. Basil of Caesarea was, according to his best friend, St. Gregory of Nazianzus, mean and angry if he didn't get a nice dinner on time. There's a letter on file of Gregory writing to Basil's brother saying, please send over some vegetables. You know what he's like when he's hungry. St. Dominic helped to create the Inquisition. St. John of the Cross, nearly his contemporary, was disappeared and tortured by the same Inquisition which may have made from, for some awkward moments in the kingdom of heaven. Saints have conducted great public arguments with bishops and kings. They have taken to bed with petulant headaches, kissed the sores of lepers, given away to the poor food which their families needed, gone on ill-advised pilgrimages with gangs of friends, celebrated Easter on the back of a whale, Saints have written beautiful poetry and brilliant theology, but they have also written a fair bit of awful poetry and sometimes bad theology as well. When you start getting into the stories of the minor saints, the weirdness becomes almost the dominant note. As with, say, my, my eternal favorite, Saint Wildefortis, whose holiness was illustrated primarily by her ability to grow a luxuriant beard in order to avoid an unwanted marriage. 
one of the things that the lives of the saints seem to tell us is that God delights in the very oddness of the human creature, our potential to be wacky and spiky and eccentric. But that original sense of the saints as a body, a community, the sense that we are all becoming saints together because we are all created to be brought into love is more, more key to this week's readings. And they are beautiful readings. First, we are given Isaiah's invitation to the feast available to everyone. Each one of us promised the wiping away of our tears, the lifting of all the shrouds of sadness and oppression which cover us, not scattered individuals or occasional exceptional people, but every wacky, spiky one of us. Revelation echoes that passage deliberately. Though the writer of Revelation can elsewhere be frighteningly dualistic and exclusionary. Here he returns to the voice of the prophet and speaks in a voice of inclusion, the ingathering of all the mourning lives and even more God coming to make a home among mortals, the redeeming God, our neighbor, one of us. The gospel then takes us veering off to the side a bit from a vision explicitly meant for all of humanity to a story about a very few individuals. Mary and Martha of Bethany appear in both Luke's and John's gospels, though they are more sympathetically treated by John. It's clear that both women were close to Jesus, were among the group of core disciples. And beyond that, according to John, his friends Really, the only people named as friends in Jesus' lifetime. Lazarus is mentioned only by John. It appears that they lived as a single household made up of three unmarried adult siblings, and that Martha was possibly the head of that household, something which would have been extraordinarily strange in that time and place. It is worth noting that the people at the center of the gospel for All Saints Year B, the only three people described as Jesus' friends, were visibly odd. People who had a distinctly non-conforming way of life. But in this moment, we see this family in affliction, mourning the loss of one of their number. It might seem like it would be a reading more appropriate for all souls, for the commemoration of all our losses. And indeed, it is probably meant in part to draw the two feasts together. But in the calling of Lazarus out of the grave, we can maybe see several meanings. We can see in it a foreshadowing of the visions of Isaiah and Revelation of the great reconciliation we can't fully imagine, in which all shrouds will be lifted like the grave cloth binding Lazarus, all tears wiped away, our griefs not denied, for Jesus himself wept at the grave, but somehow redeemed. But we can see in it too, a movement within our lives, the moments when we hear a voice calling us forward out of all the tombs we make for ourselves into a greater life. When that voice tells us to move towards someone else, someone perhaps frightening, both familiar and strange, and help to untie the grave cloths. Out of our tombs of hopelessness and fear, of all the compulsions and addictions and mental knots which bind us, out of all our denials of ourselves and our truth, voluntary or compelled, even out of all our indifference, we are called. We stumble forward, not smelling great, perhaps, awkward as the knots around us are undone, maybe terrified even, 
but moving into that great community of all the strange people, redeemed. The communion of saints, made up of every one of us when we hear and respond to that calling. Like some of you here, I spent last Sunday afternoon at a ceremony in Bellevue Square Park for a DJ, a young indigenous man who had died in a tent in the encampment. It was a time of sadness and for those of us who are settlers, also a time to reflect on how our society and our church created the conditions which led to that lonely death. But also as Elder Pauline Shirt reminded us, a celebration of the life he had lived. Young dancers from the Native Canadian Centre were the heart of the ceremony, two fierce young shawl dancers, one very gifted jingle dress dancer and a young jingle dancer just learning the steps. And most of all, the grass dance group to which she had belonged, the group whose dance traditionally cleared the ground for others to follow. One of his friends from that group spoke and, and in, his, in his little address, he talked about how even, even in the grip of deep rooted struggles, even after he'd lost his regalia and wasn't formally a dancer anymore, DJ would come to the center to meet his friend sometimes and the two of them would dance together. Maybe that is a vision of the fragile communion of saints in this life, as we reach out for each other and reach out for life despite it all. Maybe we are all dancing at the edge of the grave, but we are still dancing. And we are still being called back out of that grave towards the breath which made the world. Amen. Let us confess our faith as we say. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us still our bodies and open our hearts and minds to pray. To the petition, not our will, Lord. The response is, but yours be done. 
but yours be done. We pray for all the saints on earth, all walking as friends of Jesus through the light and shadows of life, in grassy meadows and scaling bare rock, that we may all preserve with persevere with joy, supporting one another along the way. We praise you for their example and rejoice that they live in your heaven with every tear wiped away. Not our will, Lord. But yours be done. We give thanks and pray for our church leaders, especially for Archbishop Andrew, Mother Maggie, Mother Andrea, Deacon Elizabeth, and all who participate in the Eucharist. For those being called to particular ministries and those called to change their way of living, we pray for courage and the grace to obey. We pray especially for those who accepted this daily commitment in their lives. In the Canadian Church, we ask your blessings upon the principal, faculty, students, and staff of the Vancouver School of Theology, and all people in churches, synagogues, mosques, and other places of worship in our neighborhoods. On All Saints Church Community Center, we give thanks and pray for the outreach and advocacy work of the Church of the Transfiguration, its drop-in for children and their caregivers, its participation in Meals on Wheels and Blythewood Out of the Cold, support for residents of the Roehampton Shelter Hotel and its native plant garden, for Trinity East, Little Trinity, and its bi-weekly coffee time neighborhood outreach, and for Trinity Aurora, its clothes closet secondhand store, weekly welcome table community meal, refugee sponsorship, participation in a campaign to provide clean and accessible water to First Nation communities, and education projects on Indigenous issues. In the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada, we pray for the de principal, dean, faculty, students, and staff of Martin Luther University. Internationally, we pray for the Anglican Church in Aotearoa, New Zealand, and Polynesia. May our commitment to serve you in our own areas enable us to spread your life-giving joy. Not our will, Lord. But yours be done. We pray for all the kingdoms and nations of the earth, for their late leaders and their people, their policy and needs, that under God's overending love, they may learn his ways and his will. We pray especially that the Climate Change Conference solutions will be implemented by all countries in the world. Not our will, Lord. Let yours be done. We pray for all who feel pressurized to confirm, conform to wrong values in order to be accepted, especially in places where truth, free will, and individualism are non-existent and where violence and human rights abuse has become the norm in daily life. We pray especially for all who are dealing with the safety protocols and vaccination policies to contain COVID-19 pandemic throughout the world, that reason and consideration for others will overcome fears and reliance on information originating from non-medical or non-scientific sources. We pray that those who govern and advise may seek out God's will to make decisions that affect the outcomes for the good of all in each crisis, dilemma, and debate. We pray for a commitment to fight evil and cultivate good in our world. Not our will, Lord. But yours be done. We pray for those we love and care for and those who love and pray for us for the wisdom to learn from all experiences in this life so that we are not damaged, but rather grow from difficult times. We give thanks and pray for our parish family who gives us strength and support to face the challenges of our lives each day. For Evernese Benskin, Joyce Benskin, Katie Berger, Annette, Errol, Shanice, and Riley Jerome, 
and Serena Brooker, Lovina Bryan, Andrea Budgie, Brent Campbell and Misha Bodish McCabe and Ziggy Bodish McCabe, Robert Carson, Jonathan Chabot, Jack Chadwick, Phyllis Coombs, Catherine Crockett and Colin Hines. Not our will, Lord. But yours be done. We pray for the weak and the vulnerable, the weary and the desolated, for those who, those entrenched in sin and endangering others, for all who suffer in mind, body, and spirit, that they may sense you close beside them, knowing your healing and comfort by your love, for all victims of abuse and tyranny, for all who suffer long-term effects of torture, war, disease, poverty, addiction, all acts of injustice and violence, domestic and foreign, group or random acts, in past or present experience, for all victims of fires, earthquakes, extreme temperatures, and other natural disasters. This week, healing prayers are asked for Phyllis, Vanesta, Becky, Alex, Teja, Damien, Tanis, Beck, Lovina, Michael, Victor, Kadim, Kim, Marvin, Ed, Roy, Andrew, Leone, Dave, Margaret, and Gary, Sue Ann, Terry, Danette, Jean, Alicia, Georgina, Mother Joyce and Deacon Allison, Andy Alley, Maria, Cheryl, Emily, George, Rena, Laura, Shirley, Darla, John, and the Huggins family. Not our will, Lord. But yours be done. We pray for those who have died in faith, giving thanks for the shining lives of St. Stephen and all the saints, that with them we may come to share in the endless joys of heaven, remembering Alfred Roberts and all who have died and those who have lost their lives through acts of violence. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And may light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. Amen. With thankfulness, we th celebrate the transforming love of God, which can take us as we are and make us into what God can already see we could become. We ask this in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. their joy and their glory must be those endless sabbaths the blessed ones see comes for the valiant the weary ones know. God shall be all and in all ever be what are the monarch, the court, and the throne? What are the peace and the joy that they own? Oh, that the blessed ones who in it have shared, all that they feel could as fully declare. Truly Jerusalem, name without shore, vision of peace that brings joy evermore, wish and fulfillment can severed be bared. All the thing prayed for comes short of the prayer. There where no troubles distraction can bring, we the sweet anthem 
songs of Zion shall sing. Wherefore thy grace, Lord, their voices of praise, the blessed people eternally raise. Now in the meantime, with hearts raised on high, we for that country must yearn and must sigh, seeking Jerusalem, dear native land, through a long exile on Babylon's strand. Lo, before God with our praises we fall, of whom and in whom and through whom are all. Praise to the Father and praise to the Son, praise to the Spirit with them ever one. Let us pray. Holy and mighty God, we give you thanks for the triumph of Christ in the lives of all his saints. Receive all we offer you this day and help us, like them, to run our course with faith, that we may come to your eternal kingdom. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. In the multitude of your saints, you have surrounded us with so great a cloud of witnesses that we rejoicing in their fellowship, may run with patience the race that is set before us, and together with them receive the crown of glory that never fades away. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all who have served you in every age, we raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your
Christ. We give thanks to you, Lord our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he, he, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, Father, according to his command. We remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all. Presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, Reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. And bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your children. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory are yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. As the Savior taught us, let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver 
us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. I am the bread of life, says the Lord. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us lamb of god you take away the sin of the world have mercy on us Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Let us pray. Lord of hosts, we praise your glory reflected in your saints. May we who share at this table be filled with the joy of your eternal kingdom, where Jesus is Lord now and forever. Amen. Glory to God. whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. The peace of God, which passes understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.
Go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Catherine, for that final hymn. We will be having some singing in church tomorrow, but we're not going to have that one because the temptation to sing along is too great. So this, this was your only kick at that can this year, people. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a, a splendid rendition. Um, not a lot of new announcements, I think. I believe that our Cloud of Unknowing discussion group is meeting on Monday at 7. And uh, the Bible study and meditation Tuesday at 7.30. Um, I alluded to the Sunday 10.30 a.m. service. There's a Sunday 10.30 a.m. service in person in the church. And we are, I think, going to try have, having a very small choir in the balcony. I think we're going to try that. We'll see how it goes. Uh, Wednesday noon mass in the parish in person. That's a said mass. Um, and Friday drop-in, Saturday and Sunday community breakfasts. Um, trying to think the Deacons of York Credit Valley event is over, the outreach conference is over, the climate march is over. Um, the Kenneth Leach lecture is coming up on November 15th, but I don't have that information easily to hand. So you can check the parish newsletter for more information about uh, the Kenneth Leach lecture, which will be given by Rowan Williams this next year, this year. Uh, next Saturday and next Sunday, we will be celebrating All Souls. And the services Saturday night and Sunday morning will include the reading of the names of the dead, people associated with the parish or people who are, have, been, have been close to parishioners. If there are names which have not been included in previous years and which you would like to have included in the reading of names this year, please get them to me uh, sometime before Saturday, November 13th. Um, and they will be incorporated into the list. It is a running list, so any names which have been included in previous years are still included. After that, it will be the uh, Reign of Christ, and then after that, it will be Advent 1. So uh, time is moving at a fearful rate. We will not see green again until after Epiphany. And uh, we're still working on our Advent and Christmas plans, but there will be some and it will probably be a mix of online and in-person. I think that is everything I have to announce for now. So just uh, to encourage people who have joined us on Zoom to stick around after the postlude for uh, informal chat. And if you're joining us on our other platforms, consider joining us on Zoom so you can stick around and chat with us afterwards. Thank you. Mm -hmm.